All right, so I've been messing around with Windows 11 contained inside of my virtual machine for a little bit now. And I think I figured out what some of the pros and cons are, at least from how I see things, how I look at Windows. Uh, so why don't we start with the bad things? First, Microsoft is killing off 32-bit computers with Windows 11. I don't know if they're ever gonna make a version for 64-bit PCs. I highly doubt it since all the versions of it right now are 64-bit. Uh, so yeah, if you were holding on to that old hardware, it's going to be no good, at least in the world of Microsoft. But luckily, you can still install various Linux distros and BSDs, which might be a better experience anyway. Uh, definitely better for your freedoms. Now, while we're on the topic of killing off old hardware, Windows 11 also requires your computer to support UEFI and trusted platform module 1.2 at the very least, but they recommend that you have TPM 2.0. And you'll also need at least four gigabytes of RAM and 64 gigabytes of storage. Uh, those are the minimum system requirements to install Windows 11. So it's definitely gotten more bloated. Those system requirements keep going up with each new release. Now, again, if you have a computer that's not like 10 years old or more, then you probably have those things already. But this allows for hardware limitations that are going to take the spookiness of uh, Microsoft Windows to the next level. So by the year 2023, Microsoft is going to start requiring that all laptops running Windows 11 have a working precision touchpad, a working webcam, and Bluetooth. I'm not gaslighting you. This isn't a tinfoil hat theory. This is fact, and it is really, really, really bad. Now, obviously, a lot of people, they don't want their webcams on all the time. That's the whole reason that people cover them. Even the Zuck covers up his webcam, and that's because if somebody hacks your machine, that's one of the first things that they are going to do is they're going to try and spy on you through that webcam. They want to figure out who this is on the other side of the internet that they managed to pwn. And of course, since Windows is proprietary, there's no way to know whether or not some creep at Microsoft, I mean, let alone hackers and you know all those scary people on the dark web, there's no way to know that somebody from Microsoft uh, isn't spying on you or you know their chums over at the NSA. Uh, Bluetooth is by far the most insecure technology that has been added to computers in the last 10 years. It seems like every other week there's some kind of Bluetooth vulnerability and because it's wireless, obviously that means that people can attack you remotely. And now Windows users, they are essentially forced to use it. Now, I have some questions about these hardware requirements because I kind of get the idea, right? Like you're gonna have to buy a laptop that has a webcam and all this stuff in it, which is kind of whatever, right? Plenty of laptops, I can't even think of a laptop that doesn't have this stuff uh, already installed in it. But there's a few laptops made in the last few years. Uh, one that comes to mind is the HP Spectre, which has a kill switch to the webcam. So this switch actually cuts the power from your motherboard to the webcam. So it's not disabled in software, it's actually disabled. Is Microsoft's hardware requirements going to lock up my PC if all of a sudden uh, I've had the webcam disconnected or the PC thinks the webcam has been disconnected, which it has been, it's had power disconnected, so effectively it's not working. Uh, or what if my Bluetooth gets disconnected? There's some laptops that do have uh, Bluetooth kill switches. Uh, it's a much rarer feature, like the one that I was thinking of is the Purism laptops, which I don't even think have an option to ship with Windows anyway. Uh, but I wouldn't be surprised if that gets added to some more consumer laptops or if it already exists on some that I can't think of. Or what if things get disconnected some other way? So I actually remember from back when I worked at Geek Squad, a customer needed their Wi-Fi card replaced. And the agent that did it accidentally disconnected their Bluetooth as well because those two things are right next to each other uh, and they would look very, very similar once you take the laptop apart. Uh, now we caught it because my precinct had good agents and a good manager. We always did our post-op checks uh, when we did repairs and we discovered that Bluetooth wasn't working and you know did triage and figured out, oh, it's because it was physically disconnected and we fixed it before the customer ever picked up their laptop. 
But what if this was at a crappier Geek Squad that didn't do this? Would the customer's PC be rendered as useless? Would it not boot? Would it not let them log in because Bluetooth is disconnected? These are important questions that we need answers to. Now, next on the list of awful is the increased DRM. So I talked about this a little bit in my other video, but Microsoft really, wa really wants you to buy a license for Windows 11. They're getting tired of people just downloading their ISOs off of the Pirate Bay and not paying $100 or however much it is they charge you for Windows. Now in Windows 10, if you used an unlicensed uh, copy, you couldn't change your desktop wallpaper or really you couldn't do any customizations to the UI at all. And then usually you'd have something down here that's telling you this copy of uh, Windows is not genuine so that people can judge you anytime you're recording your screen or uh, you're in a coffee shop or whatever. But that's probably fine. Okay, changing how your desktop looks, it doesn't really affect productivity. But I ranted about this in my last Windows video. So by default, the taskbar is right smack in the middle of your screen, which doesn't make any sense. This is one of the stupidest things uh, that Microsoft has done. But this is a customization. So all of these, all of these things here, um, themes, fonts, background, you can't change any of that. Um, or taskbar settings, you can't change any of this if you don't have Windows 11 activated. And this can affect your productivity, all right? This crap being in the middle and not being on the left. See, they, they only give you options of putting it on the left and the center. They know where it's supposed to go. They knew what they were doing uh, when they did this. Oh, also as a side note, there's no option to put your taskbar on like the left-hand side. I've seen some people do that. My sister actually uh, used to do that. So maybe she's gonna be sad now that you can't do this in Windows 11. Um, now this next feature is a little bit of a double-edged sword, but I would say that the edge facing towards us is the sharpest one. And that is the Windows 11 ARM support. So we all know that the new MacBooks, they have ARM chips and this configuration makes it so that you can pretty much only run Mac OS on it. Now, that's probably not the official reason. The official reason is because they give better performance or whatever, but that's one of the consequences is you can't go buy a MacBook uh, and then really run Linux on it anymore. Well, I mean, you can. Some people have managed to get Linux running natively on those M1 Macs, but it's much more difficult than it used to be. And so if Microsoft can do something similar, you know that they are going to. They will uh, just get, they'll start releasing PCs that are only going to allow you to use Windows 11. So basically, Windows has become even more Windowsy. There's the cons. Uh, now, as far as pros go, setting up Windows 11 VMs has been easier than Windows 10, at least with the developer build. Uh, so this can be a bit of a pro for Linux users who just like to use Windows VMs for gaming. Um, that's pretty much what I'm doing here. Well, not really uh, using it for gaming, but you know, using Windows as a virtual machine. Uh, so that's good. Um, you know, there's really not a whole lot of differences between 10 and 11. Like some people are also reporting uh, slightly better performance in certain games. So that's obviously good for the gamers. Uh, but yeah, besides that, Windows 11 is basically Windows 10 with a fresh coat of paint that plays nicer with the VMs and has more DRM added to it. So at the end of the day, it's still a proprietary operating system that is filled with spyware. I still wouldn't recommend running it on bare metal. Uh, go ahead and virtualize it all you want. Like I said, uh, Windows 11 seems to play better with virtualization. So that's good for us in Penguin Land. Uh, just keep as much personal data separated from not just Windows, but any Microsoft applications that you use, because otherwise those weirdos at Microsoft are going to sniff your packets and do weird stuff with them.